Hello, good morning. I am Dr. Pearly P. John, Assistant Professor in Department of Mathematics, Bharatamada College, Trikatam. Today I am going to teach you about real sequences, an introduction to real sequences. First, we will see the what is real sequence or a sequence in R, the set of real numbers. Then we will see some, the concept of convergence of a real sequence. After that, we will prove some characteristics of convergent sequences. So these are the three things we are going to learn today. And let us start. What is a real sequence? It is a function defined from set of natural numbers n. So it's a function x defining from set of natural numbers n to the set of real numbers r, which means n is the domain of x and r is the codomain of x so that for every n belongs to n, the value of x at n is denoted as, usually we write it as x of n, which is equal to x suffix n, which is a real number. So for every n, we get a real number xn and the terms, set of all terms xn, we call as a sequence and we denote it as x is equal to sequence xn and belongs to n. So xn are called the terms of the sequence. As n varies from 1, 2, 3, etc., we get the terms as x1, x2, x3, etc. Let us see some example. Let x is equal to sequence 1 by n. n belongs to capital N. So as n varies from 1, 2, 3, etc., we get the terms as 1, 1 by 2, 1 by 3, etc. See another example is x is equal to sequence minus 1 raised to n. n belongs to n. So that as n takes the values 1, 2, 3, etc., we get the terms as minus 1, 1, minus 1, 1, etc. Similarly, another example is x is equal to 1 plus minus 1 raised to n. So we get the terms as 0, 2, 0, 2, etc. So a sequence means, here we can see one thing, the terms at different positions, we treated them as distinct terms whether they have the same value, which means the number of terms of a sequence is always infinite and a sequence we usually say it is a real sequence and it is an infinite sequence. Now let us see the concept of convergence of a sequence. Let x is equal to sequence xn. n belongs to capital N. This sequence x is said to converge to a real number L. x is said to converge. A real number L. If the terms of sequence x satisfy certain condition, that is, for any epsilon greater than 0, for any epsilon greater than 0, it's a real number, positive real number. If there exists a positive integer, a natural number, k, such that the terms of the sequence xn satisfies the condition is, satisfies modulus xn minus L less than epsilon for all n greater than or equal to k. This is a formal definition of the convergence of a sequence. But what does it mean? The meaning of this condition is, when we expand the modulus of this condition, we get xn belongs to the open interval L minus epsilon, L plus epsilon for every n greater than or equal to k. Which means, the terms of the sequence xn, except for a finite number of terms, say x1, x2, x2, xk minus 1, the major part of the sequence lies in the open interval L minus epsilon, L plus epsilon, which is a neighborhood of L. 
So for as epsilon varies, we get different neighborhoods. Every neighborhood of L contains the major part of the sequence, except for a finite part. So Xn belongs to this open interval. So we say the sequence Xn converges to L. Now let us see this definition we used to prove someone standard result. We know the standard result limit n tends to infinity 1 by n equal to 0. We have studied in plus 2 level and after the degree level and all but how to prove this result? So let us use this concept of convergence. Here limit n tends to infinity 1 by n equal to 0 means we call this is sequence xn, xn is equal to 1 by n as n belongs to capital N and it converges to the limit 0, L is the given as 0. So we have to prove it, the sequence 1 by n converges to L. So by definition, let epsilon greater than 0 be given, we can take any epsilon, so that there exists a k, we have to find this k corresponding to, depends on this epsilon k, such that modulus xn minus L, here xn is 1 by n, L is 0, which must be less than epsilon for all n greater than or equal to k. So we have to find the k in order to satisfy, this is 1 by n is less than epsilon. We have to satisfy this condition to find such a k. So we know that epsilon is greater than 0, which means 1 by epsilon is also greater than 0. So by Archimedean property of real numbers, for every real number, there exists a positive integer k, such that k is greater than 1 by epsilon. Means, this implies 1 by epsilon is less than k, or 1 by k is less than epsilon. So by Archimedean property, we can find a k depends on this epsilon. So that we have epsilon is greater than, and let take any n greater than or equal to k. Let's take the inverse of the reciprocal of this, that is 1 by n, the inequality will be reversed, less than or equal to 1 by k. And we have 1 by k is less than epsilon, so that we get 1 by n is less than epsilon. That is what we want to prove it. So 1 by n is less than epsilon whenever n is greater than or equal to k. So this implies sequence 1 by n converges to 0. So this is a standard result. By using this concept, we can derive so many standard results of the limits. Now, let us see the characteristics of the convergence sequences. The first one is, a sequence if it is convergent, it converges to unique limit, means it cannot converge to more than one limit. So we have a result or we have a theorem is, every convergent sequence or a we write as a convergent sequence, a convergent sequence cannot converge to, cannot can converges to converges to more than one limit more than one limit how to prove this statement let us see suppose we assume the contradiction suppose the sequence x is equal to sequence xn converges to two distinct limits converges to two converges to two distinct limits distinct limits say l and l dash where l and l dash are some real numbers some fixed real numbers then by definition of sequence x and converges to l we get for any epsilon greater than 0 there exists a positive integer k such that modulus of xn minus l, which is less than, we can take epsilon by 2, because it is still less than epsilon, it is for all n greater than or equal to k, as well as for the same epsilon greater than 0, 
there exists another real positive integer k1 k dash take k dash such that modulus of x and minus l dash which is less than epsilon by 2 for all n greater than or equal to k dash now we got two inequalities let m be the maximum of k and k dash so that this both inequalities will satisfy for all n greater than or equal to m because it is true for all n greater than or equal to k and it is true for all n greater than or equal to k dash so both inequalities will work for this m therefore we get consider modulus l minus l dash let us see this is equal to modulus of add and subtract xn so we got like this and by using the triangle inequality we get this is less than or equal to modulus l minus xn plus modulus xn minus l dash and this is less than by using this both this is less than epsilon by 2 plus epsilon by 2 which is equal to epsilon and it is true for all and greater than or equal to m because m will satisfy for both inequalities so what we got is modulus l minus l dash less than epsilon so by a result we know that epsilon is arbitrary therefore l minus l dash which is equal to 0 and this implies l equal to l dash and which is a contradiction because we assume that l and l dash are distinct therefore every sequence which is if it is convergent then it converges to a unique limit now the second characteristic of the sequence convergent sequence is every convergent sequence is bounded so before that we know we should know what is a bounded sequence so let us define what is a bounded sequence let x is equal to sequence xn which is a sequence in r the set of real numbers then the sequence xn is said to be bounded if there exists if there exists a positive real number need not be an integer positive real number m such that modulus of xn which is less than or equal to m for every n belongs to n not for n greater than or equal to k for all, every n that means for every member of the sequence for every term of the sequence modulus xn less than or equal to m if such an m exists we say that the sequence is xn is bounded then every convergent sequence is bounded let us see that result every convergent sequence is bounded every convergent sequence is bounded so let us take one sequence say let x is equal to sequence xn n belongs to capital n assume that x is convergent because given that a convergent sequence we have to we are supposed to take so let x converges to some limit l then by definition we know that for any epsilon greater than zero there must exist a positive integer k such that modulus xn minus l which is less than epsilon for all n greater than or equal to k so epsilon greater than zero be given so we can choose any epsilon let epsilon is equal to one so depending on this value there must exist a k we give the same notation k such that we get modulus xn minus l which is less than one for all n greater than or equal to k now consider modulus xn we can write it as modulus xn minus l and plus l we just add and subtract l then by using the triangle inequality this is less than or equal to mod xn minus l and plus mod l then this is apply this inequality here we get this is less than this result by using this one we get one plus mod l when we use it we get for all n greater than or equal to k because one is true only for n greater than or equal to k so we got mod xn less than this is a fixed real number because l is a fixed constant number 
but mod xn is less than or less than 1 plus model only for n greater than or equal to k not for every n so what we are going to do is set a number m which is a maximum of mod x1 mod x2 etc mod xk minus 1 because here except x1 x2 etc xk minus 1 rest of the terms will satisfy this so we are taking this also one plus model so if you take the maximum among this finite set then it is obvious that modulus xn is always less than or equal to m for every n belongs to n which means the sequence xn is bounded now the converse of this theorem is not true which means every convergent sequence is bounded but a bounded sequence need not be convergent let us see one example example is consider the sequence x is equal to minus 1 raised to n n belongs to n we know the terms of the sequence is minus 1 1 minus 1 1 etc then we can choose m is equal to 1 so that what will happen modulus xn is equal to modulus minus 1 raised to n for any value of n minus 1 raised to n is same as 1 so we got modulus xn is equal to 1 here we get inequality so 1 is an m value of m so that the sequence xn is bounded sequence xn which is bounded but it, it is not convergent we can prove that it is not convergent we can prove it is not convergent have to prove that it is not convergent let us see we assume the contradiction suppose the sequence minus 1 raised to n n belongs to n is convergent sequence say it converges to some real number l so what we get by definition we get for any epsilon greater than zero so let us cho choose epsilon is equal to one so correspondingly there x is a positive integer k such that modulus of xn minus l here xn means minus one raised to n minus l which is less than epsilon here the epsilon value is one it is true for all n greater than or equal to k we have two cases here because n can be odd or even so for n greater than or equal to k if you take for every odd n this inequality will becomes minus one raised to any odd n which is minus one minus l which is less than one this means minus n if i take outside we get same as 1 plus L because mod X is equal to mod minus X. So 1 plus L which is less than 1. This is one inequality. And again for N greater than or equal to K. If you take even N. This is for odd N. And if you take even N. Even values of N. What we will get? Minus 1 raised to N. That is 1. We get the inequality as 1 minus L which is less than 1 for all n even n so what is the meaning this is second inequality we can show that there does not exist a real number l satisfying both these inequalities consider just consider the natural number two this is can be written as one plus one that is positive so modulus two it is same as modulus one plus one just add and subtract one minus l plus l plus 1 we just add and subtract L so it doesn't make difference and using the triangle inequality it is less than or equal to 1 minus L plus modulus L plus 1 so what will happen using these two inequalities we get this is less than mod 1 minus L which is less than 1 plus mod L plus 1 which is also less than 1 so we got 2 is less than 2 which is absurd because it is illogical 2 is less than 2 2 cannot never be less than 2 that means which means there does not exist a real number l so that minus 1 it satisfies both inequalities which means sequence 
minus 1 raised to n cannot be a convergent sequence. That is, every bounded sequence need not be a convergent sequence. And we can prove many other characteristics of convergent sequences. And let us see next time. So now we have come to the end of this class. Thank you very much.